I'm Tara Royer Steele, and welcome to the Jesus Pie and Coffee Podcast, the place where we have real conversations over pie and coffee. Hey friends, today we're talking with my friend Lindsay Ray, who Gosh, she, she does all the things. She wrote books, she has um, a podcast, and she loves talking about why she hates green beans and the one true love that she has in her life. Won't you tune in with us to find out? How are you? You know, I am making it. How are you is the better question. Why? <laughs> because book stuff. And oh, well, this isn't about and... me today, so it's all about you. You're making life happen. It's great. We really are. We have, um, it's like, how about we do all the things in the fall that uh-huh. we've talked about for years and make them happen ASAP. So Sure. That just seems smart. It is. I mean, is there another way? <laughs> I think we've been in a really quiet, I don't say quiet season, but the last few years, you know, where we haven't had a... I don't want to say set schedule. It's almost taken me a year to get into this schedule. And now (laughs) we've had a little bit more downtime. And so God's added a few more things. Mm -hmm. But we're really learning about margin. I say when we're talking about Rick, Mm -hmm. too, Mm -hmm. about margin and still going. But I I still got to carve time out for these things. So that's what we've been learning. I mean, there's so many things I want to ask you exactly. I mean, oh, yeah, exactly. Well, you just have so many interesting things to talk about. Yeah, I'm excited. Okay, can you tell everyone really quickly why you hate green beans? Yes, I can. Because, My... you know, I'm going to tell you, when you read this title, I'm holding this book up like everyone can see it. Um, <laughs> I mean, why I hate green beans is not why you would think why you would think it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right, right. My mother uh, forced, I'm going to use the word forced me to eat green beans as an adolescent because she believed they had magical powers and enzymes in the molecular structure of the bean <laughs> that helped you to lose weight. Dang, Gina. And, and I, my, she made my sister and I do it. We were dancers, and so we were always in a leotard. And we were curvy girls, and my mom is a stick figure, so she doesn't understand curves mm-hmm. at all. And so she would, she ate green beans her whole entire life to lose weight, and she still, to this day, swears by their powers. And so I guess she, that's my problem. <laughs> I'm going to start eating green beans. <laughs> you should. And and a lot of people, whenever I the book came out and, and I was kind of nervous to talk to mom about it. And I said, you know, how do you feel? Because this is the book is about insecurity. And if you if you read it for what it is, all that started with the green bean. And that woman, she said, no, I still believe to this day that green beans help you lose weight. And let me ask you, Lindsay, did they help you lose weight? And I said, well, I mean, I guess, yeah, that and a whole lot of other things. And she said, I rest my case. Mm -hmm. They work. And so a lot of people were nervous that she would, her feelings would be hurt, (laughs) that this whole book was, you know, revolved around the green bean. But she loves it. She still (laughs) believes it. She's no clue. She will tell you to this day that and beats. Oh, but I oh. believe anything that stains a paper plate should not go into your body. Beets. My dad would pickle beets. Yes. What? Ew. Ew. I've never tried it, and I'm not. Me neither. It's so gross. I'll eat roasted beets. I, I do would... have to tell you a story real quick, because yeah. this was the first, <laughs> the first, um, I'm going to throw my brother under the bus real big time here, but, um. I love you anyways, JB. So mm-hmm. it was the first um, holidays that I was with Rick's family. So we had maybe known each other for a month. And it, and so we were there. <laughs> Actually, it was two because this happened at Christmas. And um, my I had just gotten this. I had gotten I had 15 missed calls and like 30 text messages. But I was like, I'm going to leave my phone in the car, you know, and not have it at my new boyfriend's parents' house for Christmas. Mind you, this was 14 years ago. So, you know, I had that cool pink razor thing. Sure. And um, 
I decided, you know, it's like God just prompted me, just go get your phone. So I go get my phone and see all these things. And I'm like, oh, dear Lord, what has happened? Well, <clears throat> JB was in the jail oh. on Christmas Eve. And I was like, this is awesome. I'm at my boyfriend's parents' house for Christmas. My brother's in jail. And so I just like really was on the floor like a hot mess and um next thing you know rick comes into the kitchen and what he thought was um cranberry juice Mm -mm. because that's what grandma drank Mm -mm. was beet juice Mm -mm. (laughs) and he Mm -mm. spewed it everywhere and it just kind of was like thanks god for diffusing and interfering (laughs) or interceding and with beet juice And it just made everything like, oh, it's okay. Jail on Christmas Eve is awesome because we have beet juice. But anyway, so yeah, I'm totally against it. So and so is Rick. I bet. No one should love beets besides Dwight Schrute on The Office. Okay, I've never watched that, so I don't know anything. I do know who Dwight is, but I don't know The Office. Yeah, he owns a beet farm. Oh, he does. I mean, on the show. Yes, he does on the show. Mm -hmm. Got it. I do like roasted beets, but, okay, so, um, I didn't know this. I mean, we have something else in common. Yeah. Um, that your dad had a restaurant. Yeah. My whole life. And did you work there? Of course I did. (laughs) (laughs) It was, I just, I remember, you know, whenever you're younger, you're, you're doing things like cleaning off busting tables and getting refills and uh, marrying the ketchups and things like that. Oh my God, marrying the ketchups. Yes. Oh, and that seems like a gross thing to do, but it wasn't. We married the ketchups all the time. We would always, we'd make fun of them like, I take you, mister. (laughs) I mean, (laughs) did y'all have like um, code words for customers too? Like Uh, when someone was having a fight? No. Ooh, peanut butter and jelly on table seven. That's when two, oh. like a couple is having a fight. We did have a code words when I worked on the Jungle Cruise. But we she can worked get on this. the Jungle Cruise. Yeah, Disney World. I oh, at Disney. At- I forgot about, see, yes. that's just it. We're going to move past the restaurant. I'm so glad you worked in the restaurant business <laughs> with your dad. <laughs> what? <Yeah. laughs> How long did you do that? With my dad? Um I, I feel like, it, I mean, it was every summer my whole entire life. I, I, we never got paid either, I don't oh. think. And, and, um, but it was a way, you know, you wanted spending money or mm-hmm. you needed to buy your new jazz shoes or you needed gas or something. And so instead of giving us an allowance, he would just say, well, then you need to, you need to come to the restaurant and work, which is fine. My, he also used it as a punishment. Now oh. I was practically perfect in every way. But my sister, sure. on the other hand, was wayward at times. And <laughs> when she would get in trouble, he would make her on Friday nights and Saturday nights, you oh, know, big ouch. going out nights. She had to come to the restaurant and work with him. Um, and if and if she didn't work, then she just had to come and sit in the office. And she couldn't watch TV. She couldn't read a book. She couldn't do anything. She just had to sit there as a teenager, which is mortifying. So. Uh, he, we, we, we were there a lot. Um, but as we got older and when we got cars and we had more to do, it was less frequent. And it also wasn't in the town. It was in the town over. Okay. So it was a process to, to get to the restaurant. So you had to, you had to commit knowing that you're going to go there and work however many hours and then he'd give you a $20 bill and you'd leave. Mm -hmm. Oh, we walked Uh, across the street. So yeah. That's easier. <laughs> a lot easier. I remember the first thing I bought, too. Um, I bought a wardrobe for my bedroom. <laughs> oh. With 100 ones. I was real proud of myself. Of course you did. Uh-huh. Got to get those tips in there. That's awesome. That's right. And then the next thing I bought was one of those Coke puffy shirts because the oh. sweatshirt. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I know exactly what you're talking about. And that's where my addiction started. But that's okay. That's another story. Okay, so, I mean, can you just tell us, like, the back history a little? Like, there's Disney, there's entertainment, there's The Bachelor. I mean, there's all these things. Yes. I I went to Baylor, and 
Um, I had a professor there that I didn't really know what I wanted to be when I grew up. Nothing sounded right. Well, I wanted to be a Dallas Cowboy cheerleader, as everyone Duh. wanted to be, yeah. and it didn't it didn't work out for me. So I I didn't I didn't know what I wanted to be. And he said, Well, what's the one thing you've been passionate about your whole life? What's that one dream that you never thought you would go do? And immediately I said, work at Disney World. I had, I had an infatuation with Disney World, not necessarily Disney as movies. I mean, I love the movies and I love Mickey Mouse, but the actual world, the actual amusement park, I loved it. And the first time I visited was um, in 1986, and I had never been back since. And it just stuck with me all of those years. And I said, I'd really like to work there. And he said, well, why don't you try to get an internship? And that just sounded like, why don't you try to fly to the moon to me? It it, it seems so far-fetched. And, and he said, Disney has internships for the summer. You should at least go and, and, and try to get one. And you had to, you had to interview for them. And he told me that he had a pamphlet, you know, this was right when the internet was <laughs> almost a thing. Right. And we all had, we all had email, which we thought was going to save us hundreds of dollars on phone calls, which it did. <laughs> but he said they, they, we called the, pl- you know, we dialed the 1-800 number and called the intern place. And they said that they had two interviews in the United States left because we were, we were in May and I'm sure they had almost filled up all the slots and he said all right where are they and she said have you heard of college station texas <laughs> which was you know a hop skip and a jump away from waco and right. and so i i had just busted my knee and i was in a straight leg brace and couldn't i couldn't drive and so my good friend jill drove me and then we both ended up interviewing and it was a two minute interview. Wow. And then you, you were notified by mail if you got into the program and sh- neither of us got into the uh, summer program. We got into the fall program. So summer program is six weeks. Fall is six months. Whoa. And I'm so glad I went for the longer one just yeah. because you, you learn so much and you get so much more out of it. And you, I always compare it to dirty dancing. You remember when baby carries a watermelon and uh-huh. she goes to the backside of Kellerman and they're all there in yes. their debauchery yeah. dancing. That's how it is at the intern. Whenever <laughs> I went for Disney, they, it was a literal apartment complex with all of the interns. And then they would bus you to the parks because it was a living, learning, working experience. So you had to, you had to work in the parks to earn your keep, but you didn't have to pay for where you stayed. So it kind of canceled each other out. And then if you wanted or if you needed college credit, you could go to class. Well, I was the dork who went to class anyway. I graduated that summer from college. Goofy. And so I just did the internship for six months after making zero money if you're keeping score. And I uh, blew right past my master's degree and I got my doctorate from Disney University. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at it. It's on my wall right now. And I swear to you, that is the reason I had so many interviews after I got back from right. Florida is because people are going, that is totally made up. A doctorate from Disney. Bring that girl in here. We're going to ask her about it. And it was it was wonderful. We had a graduation ceremony. Mickey gave me my diploma. We had ears with the little tassel that you move from left to right. It was wonderful. I, I enjoyed every minute of that. It was some of the best times. And I never left the property. People would ask me, what about Orlando? What about the beach? What about, nope. I didn't go anywhere. If I had a day off, I'd go to Epcot and, you know, sit in in one of the cafes in France and have an eclair or something and then go ride a ride and go home. That's such a dork, but I loved it. No, I think that's awesome. My father-in-law, I did not know anything about it until I'm married into the Steele family. And so <laughs> my father-in-law sh- would probably enjoy going to do that um, oh, yeah. intern class. He is all Disney. And he it's, loves thing, it. it's things like Disney history, which yeah. is interesting, but also um, customer relations mm-hmm. and leadership and um, showing people respect. I think the Disney organization does that really well on on what they teach you that you can and can't do. You know, if you see a little kid drop their ice cream cone and have a freak out meltdown, I, as a cast member, 
have the authority to go over to the place and say, hey, can I get another ice cream cone? And I can give it to the kid. I think that's just good. That's just smart business. And right. and you have that freedom and the authority to do that. Now, you have to fill out a lot of paperwork, but still, I think it's pretty cool. I, I think that's great when you just give, I would say, interns or employees just a little bit of ownership yep. and just say, you know, I, we see it at the Pie Haven or the cafe. Like, listen, just I give you authority. Like, someone didn't like something. Okay, buy them another one. Give them another yeah. one. Whatever yeah. you got to do. And you don't want to, like, just try to make, you can't make everyone happy. Right. But you can do your darndest to be like, you know, I, that's that's good. And I, w- I want to know more of that. So mm-hmm. I love it. I love it. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Okay, so then you have The Bachelor or The Bachelorette. Which one? Do you do both? I don't know. I do both. I do actually Bachelor, Bachelorette, and Bachelor in Paradise, which is... I didn't even know there's a Bachelor in Paradise. Oh, yeah. It's really filthy. But, (laughs) yes, I do it all. (laughs) I do it all. And, you know, that happened out of of accident where I was... I I stumbled upon the show with my roommate at the time, and we thought, this is the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life. Let's keep watching. And then the next week, were you going to watch that dumb show again? Yes. And I think the first season was four weeks, and, oh, he's supposed to find love. and and Oh, yeah, they're going to get married. It's going to be awesome. And he he does. Guess what? It didn't last. That's okay. But the franchise did. I think there are more than 40 seasons, if you add them all together. Wow. Uh, that have gone on since 2003, and I have been recapping it since 2003, which is, you know, a third of my life. Just go ahead and marinate in that sentence for a minute. But it's been something that's uh, offered me so many opportunities because of me recapping this silly little show. It has opened doors. That's awesome. And those doors have then led you to opportunities, I'm sure, to sit with people and Mm -hmm. show them Jesus? Absolutely, yes. I decided, at first I was just doing recapping for The Bachelor, and then I thought, well, this show is going to go away any second. I should probably write other stuff on my website, too. And so I would... I would kind of fold in movies or pop culture things, and then I would sprinkle a little Jesus in there. And I would always do Jesus on Mondays because people were going um, to my website on Mondays and hitting refresh, or Tuesdays actually. But I would I would post Jesus on Mondays, so then on Tuesdays people are hitting refresh, waiting for the recap. Right. And as they're hitting refresh, that post that's sitting in front of them is a Jesus one. So I, there was mm-hmm. always the hope or the prayer that somebody might click on it and just see. And I never I never shoved anything down anyone's throat. Sure. It was always. This is what I'm going through right now. And so it was, I hope, relatable. There's one that people still talk about that I wrote years and years and years ago about just I'm going through storms. And I wasn't vague. I wasn't saying, oh, there are storms in my life. And I don't know. It was very much, I'm sad and I'm, I know I'm depressed. And it's because my life hasn't turned out the way I wanted it to. But where I, look for hope is Job. Now, let me tell you about Job. He had it really bad compared to me. So that's what I'm, I'm hopeful for. I did a, a like with Ruth, where she says, uh, 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 um, Naomi says, I'm bitter. Uh, call me Mara. I don't really, you know, I, 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 a lot of people are, are, are love Ruth and I always yes. associate with Naomi, which makes me, ah. and you know, Mary and Martha, I'm, I'm the, the Martha of the group, you know, back in the kitchen running around, making sure everything, and this isn't fair. Don't you see me over here? What's going on? And so I think a lot of people weren't expecting me to just give them this sweet little devotional with a bow at the end of it. It was, Hey, I'm struggling with this. Don't mm-hmm. know if you are, but here's what's sort of helping me through it. Hope it helps you. Sure. Well, I'm mm-hmm. pretty sure that's like, I mean, that's the way that works for best for most of us. Yeah. From your life experiences. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I love it. I love it. it cracks me up. And then the Bachelor recap ended up on the desk of someone at Entertainment Weekly. Okay, that's how that so- happened. Yes, uh, in uh, gosh, 2013 now. I can't believe that's been that long ago. And she 
she reached out to me and said, would you be interested in writing recaps um, for online? Because at the time, if you think about it, I, I just heard on the news that there are some article I read that there are 500 shows out there right now, television shows between all of the networks, all of the cable channels and Hulu and Netflix and Amazon prime with all of their original programming, 500 shows. Well, entertainment weekly doesn't have enough bodies to cover all these shows. So they're, they're trying to get the top tier or the ones that are most buzzed about and the way people drop, things nowadays where here are your 10 episodes binge watch and and so you get somebody doing that for a couple of days so they just needed more hands and luckily she had a lot of bachelor recaps to read to see if i knew what you're talking about remotely what i was talking about and so at one time i was recapping four shows for them and felt very much tethered to my um, television but it was so much fun very much worth it. Helped me to write um, quicker, to get to the point faster, Mm -hmm. to be able to watch something for an hour and water it down to what are the three main things that people know? Because that's another thing people ask. Why does anybody read a recap? Why, Why are you interested in reading recap? I believe there are two reasons why people read a recap. Number one, they are a, a true hardcore fan and they want to read about and listen to what other hardcore fans think about. Let's figure out who the murderer is or let's figure out what that cliffhanger is or let's figure out what's going on in that or ooh, let's predict what might happen next season. There are those people. Then there are the people who have not a lot of time and they want to know if that Grey's Anatomy episode is worth their time for sitting down for 48 minutes and watching it on their DVR. If I say it was kind of a meh and here's what you need to know, they'll delete it and move on. They're those people. So recaps are here to stay, I I believe. And luckily Entertainment Weekly is is continuing to ask me back every every season. So I'm excited. I'm doing Grey's Anatomy again this year. Yes, it is still on the air. That's my I started in the beginning with that show and then something happened and I I I think it was when the plane crash happened. So it's been a long time. Yeah. And I, and I understand that too. When something's so emotional, a lot of people, there was a major death. I won't spoil, but <clears throat> there's a major, major death. And a lot of people just wash their hands of it. They went, mm, nope, I'm done. Shonda Rhimes, she's dead to me. And, but oh, there are, she, there are she people. died? Oh, okay, see? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> that was my interpretation. So yeah. there you go. Yeah. Nope. So, so anyway, I, and Grey's Anatomy might be weird too now because there's, I mean, h- how do you keep it fresh? How do you keep it yeah. new? I don't know, but here I am on my third season writing for them. And it's great. I love it. I really and, have never read recaps, but mm-hmm. I really should because like I, I used to be that TV. I mean, I'm, I don't want to say I'm a junkie, but that's my, like, if it's nine o'clock at night or in the morning, I just, I just turn it on. Yeah. It's and that's my life. like, mm-hmm. and then we don't have all the TV that we used to have anymore. I think we have 29 whopping channels right. and the Hulu and the Netflix and all of that stuff. Um, yep. And so I'm, I miss, I miss lifetime channel, but that's okay. And, <laughs> but, the there, but I have my, my diehard shows that I still like, how can I watch this show? Um, but I don't watch shows when they happen. So that's. That's yeah. probably my big thing. Like I'm, I watch shows uh, six months convenient. later, and yeah. I think that's a lot of it. Was like it's just what season you're in too. But yeah. I think also the, another thing you said two things about the recapping. I think another one is though great because another person's perspective is pretty great too. Because I'll be like, you know, I totally didn't see it that way. Yeah, it's and it's also I I used to. I used to recap Big Bang until it went off the air for them. And I would watch Big Bang at 7. I'd, and if it's a 30-minute show, you have 30 minutes to write the recap. And then mm-hmm. you have to turn it in. If it's an hour-long show, then you have an hour to write the recap and you have to turn it in. So, so you I'll, have to, like, turn it in ASAP, obviously, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. And and only because that was another thing, too. Why do you have to, why do you have to write it so fast? 
is because if there's definitely a water cooler moment, if something happened that's huge that is going to rock social media, people are going to be running to Google saying, what happened on mm-hmm. Grey's Anatomy? And that you want them to have your article already ready to go, so you get a lot of clicks for that. But um, also by, and, and this is just the training we go through in Entertainment Weekly, you have it written, so some people are going to read it that night. Some people will wait for in the morning, but by 2 or 3 o'clock the next day, your article is obsolete. Wow. Because people are already gearing up for whatever's coming on that night, that particular night, or whatever happening that weekend. And, and, and your article has been buried by, I don't know, 50 other articles. So it's no longer on the front page. And it's just an interesting time to be in this world with social media. And if you don't post it on Facebook or Twitter or Instagram, it never happened. Uh, people aren't going to EW.com anymore. They're going to get to my article because I happen to pop up in their Facebook feed and they're going to go, oh, yeah, right, and click on it. So wow. it's interesting. Mm-hmm. It is. Could you just, can I tell you what shows to recap for me and you just send them sure. to me? Okay, I will the Blacklist. Do that. Okay. Have you done, do you watch that? I don't. <laughs> oh, okay, well, you should watch it first before you say you're going to recap it. Okay. <laughs> I don't think it's going to last much longer once it finally comes back on. I think it's come to the end. Okay. That's okay. So you maybe only would have like six to do. Okay. I should. I could probably just watch them. <laughs> and the only other one I always watch is This Is Us because, I mean. Yeah, they I mean. do a, they do a, uh, a, a recap for This Is Us on Entertainment Weekly. That is that is held for special people oh, over okay. there. So I can't. That is a. That's a, the fancy a, people. Yeah. We aren't in that category. A golden crown you try to get. And I recapped it once I filled in that it was so last minute. I mean, I think the show was already airing. The episode was already airing and we get this this mass text saying, "Does anybody watch This Is Us? Is there anybody who can take over This Is Us?" because I think the the guy who did it there was a blackout or oh. he lost his electricity or something and he literally couldn't watch it. And uh, some shows give you screeners, which bless their hearts. That is wonderful. Most big time shows like This Is Us and Grey's Anatomy and all your big hunky ones, they don't give you a screener. So you literally have to watch it live. And I was able to step in because I answered the call first because I was probably watching it. I have never been more nervous in my entire life because <laughs> you're going to you, mess it up for everyone. It's like so catering God, for people. Like, so don't nervous. mess I, up the I, food. Is, I, and I made Laura, my roommate, watch it with me. And I was saying, okay, am I, am I getting everything correct? Is there something weird that I miss? Because, you know, there are always these little Easter eggs in there. Uh-huh. And that's what a recapper is supposed to get and do. Like, did you notice that in the background, in the whatever, it said this? And, ooh, what if that means? And, and then there one time I couldn't understand what the guy said, and I had to <laughs> rewind it and put it on closed captioning. It was just a hot mess. <laughs> And I did not do it in an hour, and they were yelling at me, but they gave me a little grace because I was stepping in. But I, I've never been more nervous for a recap. <laughs> like, one. I'm just going to uh, stick to Grey's Anatomy. Yes, I get that one. Yeah. Oh, goodness. Well, I think it would be hard to step into that one. Mm-hmm. Okay, so, I mean, I, I love all that. But that's um, I'm an entertainment geek, so that's probably why I love all of that stuff. But um, I wanted to talk. So tell me about your new book. The newest newest book. book. Yes. uh, The newest book's called It's a Love Story, and it came out back in April. Mm -hmm. And I I had a two-book deal that I did back-to-back books. So one came out in February 2018, one came out in April in 2019. I would not suggest to anyone listening that you produce back-to-back books because it is Mm back-breaking. And uh, it was my first time to ever do that. So I I feel like I learned a lot the first go-round and then equally I learned a lot the second go-round. But it's probably I... They're two different books. I feel like one, the first one's about insecurity and how we how we kind of maneuver through that in life. And the second one is all about how we see love in the world. Mm-hmm. And so I think I enjoyed writing the second one more than the first one because it's uh, a happier it's a happier topic. and and a lot of people, 
automatically connect love to marriage or relationship. And I am not married, nor am I in a relationship and nor do I have children. So that was, it. it's an interesting look at love and the way that we desire it in our, in our lives. How that's why I truly believe if you think about how many people watch Hallmark Christmas movies, this year they have 40 new ones for 2019. Four zero new ones. Um, and you and know how- this because you're fancy. Right. Because <laughs> I'm like, I've already been like, wait, if we get YouTube TV, is the Hallmark channel on there? <laughs> Because where know. can I watch Hallmark Christmas movies? And I know. It's, is it September? Wait, it's September. When do they start coming out? They start in October. Okay, well, I need them to hurry up because maybe they'll bring yeah. cool weather to Texas. Right. Here's the deal, though, and, and this is this is what I'm noticing, a trend that I'm noticing that you've probably noticed, too. I mean, Hallmark is, is just this pin, pinnacle of what is this love story yep. Christmas everybody loves it but it's let me all tell perfect you, and it's wonderful yes and let me tell you though if you start looking right now at Netflix at Hulu at Amazon you're going to start noticing little Christmas love stories popping up because I these have. people are not stupid <laughs> they know that is a huge audience and i need to get a piece of that pie so i wouldn't you, I, I wouldn't sweat it too much if, if you can't get the Hallmark because you're not going to get 40, but you are going to get, um, Enough. I, I would say, a hearty handful. Yeah, I would say you're going to get a hearty handful of love stories because Netflix has it figured out. They finally heard me when I said, where are all the love stories? I mean, Sandra Bullock and Meg Ryan and Julia Roberts, they taught me how to love oh, along with Walt amen, Disney. Amen, sister. So where, where are these stories? I love a superhero. I'm tired of a superhero. <laughs> you know, you want any more Marvel comics? I no, I don't want any... I don't want any more war. I don't want any more. This is going to be the best Oscar nominated. That's great. Give me Sandra Bullock trying to fall in love with somebody who's asleep and I am there all day long. I have to tell you. Okay. So we had this store. Um, I don't remember how many years ago, 19 something. Mm-hmm. And um, it was called We Three Queens. And it was my mom and my sister-in-law and I. And mm-hmm. we had a TV. And play DVDs in that store. And, I mean, we just had all the things you would want as a girl to buy. And we played chick flicks over and oh. over. And they were all Sandra, all Meg, yeah. and all Julia. Absolutely they were. Yeah. Be- yeah. Because you know what's what. And I have been complaining to the world and Hollywood for long enough that I think they finally heard me. And when Netflix, I don't know if you've seen the show, you need to watch it if you hadn't. Um, to all the boys I've loved before, and that's even based on a YA book. It's darling. It's cute. Safe for the whole family. That thing blew up in Netflix's face, and I think they went, oh, wait a minute, because it's been so long. It's time. Everything is rotating back around. My niece is wearing scrunchies. I'm oh, sorry. Gosh. It's yes. time for it's time for my love stories to roll back it around, is. too. And I think we're at, we're, I think we're on the cusp of that, and I am super excited. Me too, because I love Bentley, my youngest. But all we, all he wants to do is watch the Marvels and the scary things. And mm-hmm. I, we don't judge on this podcast, yeah. but he's eight, but. and he started watching Stranger Things the other day, and I was like, mm-hmm. "Aren't you nervous or scared or something?" No, mom, mm-hmm. the demo blah blah blahs and the blah blah blahs, and I was like. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. I don't even know what you're talking about. I watched episode one and didn't make it all the way through. So me neither. Bring me we back did. to Julia because I watched. Um, what did I watch the other day? And Rick was like, "What the heck is this movie?" Um, oh, good grief! My best friend's wedding. Yes, oh. wasn't it wonderful? And I know that. And this is going to lead straight into what your um, core is on your book. Mm-hmm. It's a love story, and I know that the guys are not, you know, we don't have to have true love, and that guys don't fix everything, and mm-hmm. that the true person is Jesus. Yeah. But we, can yeah. we just pretend like it's him running across the field and <laughs> Julia's chasing him? So, 
Well, the the good news is the encouraging news is to me, and and this is whenever it it all clicked for me. I mean, I've heard I've heard Jesus is your true love, and Jesus, and yes, we all know that as truth. But it clicked for me the the reason why I love the romance movies and the romantic comedies is I was watching uh, Prince Harry and Meghan Markle oh, get, mm-hmm. get married. Me and 47 billion Did you get up people. at 4 a.m. or whatever? Yes. Me too. Oh, of course I did. Of I watched it with Brayden, my nine-year-old. Wasn't yes. That sweet? It, moments you will remember I'm forever. Like, we laid on and the I, pillow and watched it. And I remember thinking, look at how many people are watching mm-hmm. this. Why is that? Even if it's because half of us love Princess Diana, that's still a love story or a tragic love story or she was the people's princess or mm-hmm. however you want to to say it. I, there, I just kept thinking, what is it that makes us all run to Hallmark, that makes us all run to this fairy tale wedding and and the gushing of it and the feelings and the squishiness? is that we're rooting for it. We mm-hmm. are always rooting for the love story, even in these romantic comedies, even, I'm sorry, in The Bachelor. That show is still on, which means people are still watching it. There's always that one little thread of hope where you think, oh, maybe this time it's going to work. Maybe this time it'll be great. And I think that we are ingrained with that in our hearts because back when we were separated from God in the garden, there's always going to be that longing to be reunited. And that that love, I believe, is what comes from him. And, and all of these frilly, squishy, romantic, gushy, batting our eyelash feelings, that's going to be times a thousand once we get to heaven. So on this side of heaven, I think there's nothing that's going to be able to fill that void, which is where we can get in trouble. You think, right. oh, if I only get married, then I'll feel that way. Well, no. And then you think, oh, if only I have a kid, then I'll feel, no. Well, only if I just made a little bit more money, no. Well, only if this, if only if that. So I think we're we're trying to feel that euphoria and, and we're never going to, to feel that this side of heaven, which is why all of the romance and the lovey dovey stuff makes sense to me. Yes. I love it. I I'm totally with you. I'm, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm with you. Um, I, can we touch on this? I know we probably have to wrap it up soon, but cause we could just keep talking about the gushy things, mm-hmm. but let's talk about that whole hard thing that you've gone through, Mm -hmm. which I think is a great subject to talk about. For one, I've been there too, so I can Mm -hmm. relate with you and, Mm -hmm. um, that it's okay. (laughs) Yeah. And that it is better on the other side. However, that other side is. Yeah. And we're talking about... Give me a D. D. Give me an yeah. I. Give me a V. D I V O R C E. Yes, divorce. That is something that I don't think anybody ever thinks. No, oh, I hope I don't get a divorce. I just never considered it. I was the kid who did everything good, correct, right. Uh, whenever I said I was practically perfect in every way, that is a true statement because I was terrified to be anything else. I made straight A's. I never. Hardly did anything bad. Um, I had never experienced death in my life. I had gone to the same school my whole life. I applied for one college because I wanted to go to Baylor, and that's where I got in. It didn't occur to me to apply to other colleges. Mm -hmm. And I'd had the same boyfriend since high school, and we dated all through high school, all through college. Then we both moved to Dallas, to the big city, to, to start our lives fresh, and a year into the marriage, I discovered that he had been unfaithful and he had been cheating for uh, quite a while. And it was a devastating punch to the gut. It was a blow that I was not expecting. Of course, hindsight is twenty twenty. I can see things not adding up once I have all of the information. But it was something that I thought long and hard about what it meant in the moment of, okay, we are faced with this terrible thing. What are we going to do with it? And, and my personality is, well, this is what they mean for better or for worse in your vows. And so you stay and you work through it and you're going to be refined and be stronger than ever. 
And um, so I stayed and I stayed and I stayed for a very long time. And finally, he was the one that took me by the shoulders and he just said, oh, my gosh, you you are really great on paper. But what mm. she and I have is real. And so I'm I'm choosing my life with her. I think he was just waiting for me to get mad and, and go off. And I didn't. I was fighting for the marriage. And so whenever he said that, I thought, oh, you are not fighting for the marriage. And so we got a divorce and I moved to Houston uh, just because I was in the public relation business and needed to be in a big city. And I had friends here that I knew would pull me out of the fetal position when that time came. And I think for the longest time it was um, there was a, a long time of darkness for me. And then I finally, finally kind of climbed out where I could figure out who I was by myself because for so long it had been the two of us since I was 17. Right. And now I'm 30 or 32 and I'm trying to figure out life on my own and what that looks like and not, not be completely depressed that right as my world is crumbling, everyone else around me seems to be having their second or third or fourth child. And, oh, look, we've moved into the lovely house that you've always wanted. And yay. And, and it, it felt very, very unfair. And that was a, a really great time for me to uh, wrestle with the Lord and learn that um, I can be angry with him. I can be upset. I can shake my fist and say, this isn't fair. I don't understand because it's not like he doesn't know that's what I'm thinking anyway. Mm -hmm. So I was able to process through all of that and end in a place of, but there is no plan B. So help me to keep my eyes open for what it is that you do want my life to look like, because I have no idea. And in the moment where I surrendered everything I was grasping at or holding on to um, things, I definitely felt a shift in my life. And I was able to climb even more out of that hole. Mm, thanks for sharing. I know yes. that's not easy stuff, but I think it's probably something that people need to hear and that, mm -hmm. you know, you're mm -hmm. okay and you're good yep. and life yep. is great and you're single and yep. Jesus is the best boyfriend ever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but not I'm that so you're I, okay, yeah. not okay. You would be fine if someone, if Jesus wanted to send you somebody, you that's go. fine. That's great. That's fine. Come on. It'll be fun. <laughs> I think uh, you wrote something like, I'm not that story. If you just pray hard and wait patiently, it will happen. Yeah, no, no, no. That's not me. <laughs> that, that's, that's the thing that was, I didn't like to hear this too shall pass. That made me mad when people, I wanted to kind of punch people in the throat when they said that. Or, you know, some people would say, what do you think you did to contribute to the divorce? Mm -hmm. And that was... That was always hard for me to hear because some people would say, well, if his head turned for a reason mm -hmm. that you, you weren't keeping him interested or something, mm -hmm. and that used to make me mad. But um, a lot of people tell me that I need to do online dating, which I have before, and it's not me. And a lot of people tell me I need to freeze my eggs, which oh, is she's. such a fun conversation <laughs> to have. And, um, yeah, and then, and then you just hear all the time, well, I just, I just waited patiently and I prayed and prayed and prayed and, and one day it happened. And I don't like to hear that because I am waiting patiently and I am praying and praying and praying for it to happen. But nowhere in the Bible does it say, if you want it bad enough, you'll get it. You know, nowhere does it say, if you pray, pray, pray the right way, and if you mm -hmm. say the right words in the right order, then that's when it, you know, wiggles its way through heaven and gets into the Lord's ears so he can say, granted, you know, it didn't work that way. Mm -hmm. And I will continue to pray for that because it is something I want, and I will continue to try and be patient because that's something I, I have a hard time doing, but I try really hard. But I also need to know that... Um, I cannot live in this place of wanting or 
um, anxiety of not having. I, I want to live my life well where the Lord has me right. right now in my status that happens to be single because he has me here right now single for a reason. Yes. So I think that's I'm, probably the thing that people always cut off that, well, if it's in his if it's his will, like people like, well, go. if you pray it, that's fine. It's going to happen. I was like, well, not really. Right. Yeah. And, and, and that's fine if it doesn't, but you can also have faith and hope that it will. Sure. Mm-hmm. That's well, that's why we keep going. Right. That's exactly right. And he always seems to bring something that's way better too. Sometimes I'm just saying mm-hmm. usually. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, so, I mean, I know you cracked me up when I asked you um, for a recipe, because, you know, it's Jesus pie and coffee, and (laughs) you're like, uh, you're funny, and you think I cook. (laughs) Right. Yeah. And so, um, you just cracked me up with, um, with that, and so, um, I do want, would like that cheese ball recipe that you talk about. Okay. (laughs) I can, oh, you want me to say it, or do you want me no, to say it? No, you can just oh, say okay. it so we can tell everybody about the cheese ball. It's the, it's the one thing that I make, and yeah. It's and my, everybody wants to know, what was that, yes, right? Everybody wants to know. They cannot seem to figure out. It's so funny What's to that me. one thing in there? Yes. And you don't have to, well, what is it? Oh, I was going to say, yeah, it's rice. What? And yes, I know. And people, I mean, the rice is just right there in front of your face and they, and they're tasting it going, what is that? What is, because the rice is what keeps it all together. And you're thinking, gross. I'm telling you, everybody who eats it, I think, I think the secret to a good cheese ball is the correct cracker. So. Oh, what's the correct cracker? I think the correct cracker is wheat thins because it's hard and crispy. I don't think I don't think a Ritz cracker is a good or a club cracker or any of that. Mm-mm. You need a hard, sturdy cracker. Oh, I think Ritz are only good for cheese whiz, like the canned it's stuff. <laughs> yes, we oh, eat those at our house. We do not cook fancy now. here all the time. <laughs> that sounds so good right now. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, I'm going to end on, okay, so tell us what you're reading right now, because I'd love to get into what you're reading right now. Oh, you're so cute. I am reading, um, oh, now, hold on, let me look. You said Harry Potter, Goofy. Oh, I did. Oh, man. I thought I was going to read what I was reading for the AP. Okay, yeah. Oh, well, you can do that one, too. I mean, because we all review things for the AP, so please. (laughs) I just read a book called After the Flood by Cassandra Montag, Uh and it's already out. I think it came out um, first week of September, and it's a dystopian type thing, but the whole world has been covered in water. I'm sure there's something out there, that Kevin Costner weirdo movie called Waterworld. That That was the worst movie ever. Wasn't it? God. this book is very. This book is very interesting about uh, th- uh, this dystopian. I had never read anything about water. You know, I'd a- always read the Divergent series or the Hunger Games and that kind of dystopian stuff. But this is really it's interesting. I I, I enjoyed it for the most part. But I am rereading the Harry Potter series only because, and I'm not going to finish, but I'm headed back to Florida here pretty soon in the next couple of weeks. And I'm going to Universal where there's Harry Potter world. Uh, We went there last year. It wasn't it magical. Okay. I'm going (gasps) to say, don't you dare tell me you've never, well, I love you and I eat pie too. Glad you like pie too. Okay. (laughs) Oh my God. I have never read Harry Potter. Ah, I've never watched any of the movies either. In the heart, in the heart. But let me tell you, Bentley, you know, Uh the one that loves all the little, he became addicted to Harry Potter. Like every day, like he'll just could stay there all day and like, mom, can you buy me the next one? I was like, I just bought the last one on Amazon. Oh, I know. It's so good. So I thought I did buy the book. So maybe we could get in snuggle at night and read the book. But I just darn right stink at that stuff. Oh my gosh, it's so, it's so great. And I'm so jealous because he's reading it for the first time and I'm reading it for the fifth time. But it's Wait, I didn't so, say we were it, reading it yet. I just said we bought it. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be so good. It'll be, it'll be really good. I, I just think it's 
so magical. It feels like, I know you haven't seen the movies, but when you walk into that place, it feels like you are on a movie set. Really? Oh, there. well, I totally agree with that. But I mean, I'm that way with Disney. Disney just, I mean, I walk in the front door at Magic Kingdom Me and too. I'm like, Me a too. little girl. We're going there as well. Yeah. Oh, everyone should. Five days there and one day at Universal. Mm. Mm-hmm. I love it. Five days at Magic yeah. Kingdom? Mm. Um, at Disney World. So oh, okay. We'll hop, we'll hop through all of the different lands. Worlds, whatever. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. awesome. Okay. Well, um, really quickly, can you tell yeah. everybody how to, you know, find you and all the things and your book? Yes, and absolutely. I, you can find my writing, just regular old writing at IHateGreenBeans.com. Uh, you can, I have a podcast where I just do pop culture stuff, mostly Bachelor doing Bachelor season, but that's about to be over. So we're going to get into some good random stuff. And that's also I Hate Green Beans, the podcast. And the books are available anywhere books are sold. So you can just Google my weirdo name and you'll find me. I like your weirdo name. Thank you. I used to hate it, but I like it now. Yeah, it's it sticks now. It does. Totally. Okay. Well, I love you, friend, and I've loved visiting with you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. And hopefully we'll see each other in the real world soon over pie. Yes. Okay. Talk to you later. Okay. Bye. Bye.